Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee. Uh, I just got home from uh, some medical tests. And uh, while I was laying there uh, with a bunch of tubes uh, sticking out of my arms and wires on my chest and stuff, I was thinking, you know, how can I give people some just quick tips to uh, help them with their individual preparedness? And uh, there used to be a... Uh, uh, the back page of Field and Stream magazine back in the day would have tabs, tips, and they were just little tips and uh, tricks for the, uh, you know, the sportsman, the fisherman, the outdoorsman, and whatnot. And uh, I've often thought that those little tips and tricks are really beneficial to people and uh, kind of wanted to do a video of that nature on uh, on some preparedness items. Now, I got a bunch of things laid out here that I'm going to go over for you guys and give you some uh, quick tips in uh, to preparedness because I've always been about um, solutions to uh, problems. You know, we all know the problems in the world and we all know that things can, you know, change on a dime and bad things can happen to good people. It happens all the time. But, you know, it's those little things that we do for one another like share tips that uh, help us uh, get through anyway I'm going to go through a few things here I'm going to just kind of go off the top of my head and uh, point out some things to you guys the first one is one of my old coffee cups here and if you're in a lack of a uh, way to sharpen a knife the bottom of a coffee cup does a really good job of it the unglazed portion just like uh, the edge of a car window that is basically like a ceramic rod, and it can hone a knife back into shape. One thing that I did for years in my packs and bags is carry a small bottle of lighter fluid. Now, nowadays, there is just tons of different ways to start fire, and there's fancy uh, fire-making stuff. But I literally carried a bottle of either Zippo or uh, what's that, Ronzol lighter fluid in my packs for years and then the added benefit of this if you carry a zippo lighter you got a way to uh refill that uh, zippo lighter but a little bit of lighter fluid on whatever it is that you want to start while it isn't uh, the pure bushcraft way of doing stuff can get a fire going in a uh, hurry and it's something that people just don't uh, talk about another thing is batteries uh, alkaline and lithium Lithium batteries are better in the cold. Now, cold can still affect any battery, no matter what it is, but lithiums are more resilient to cold weather. So if you're leaving something like a flashlight in your car or like a sight on a defensive implement, uh, try to go with the lithiums because they're not as uh, affected by the uh, cold weather. Another thing when it comes to uh, vehicles, you know, everybody talks about, you know, spare tires, that kind of stuff, having plenty of fuel around, uh, you know, maybe having some oil when it comes to the prepping channels. But I'm here to tell you, having one of these guys right here in your vehicle, having a spare windshield wiper. I don't know how many times it was either raining or snowing or there was ice or there's something on my windshield wipers and they broke. And I'll tell you what, if that happens in some type of bad situation where you're trying to get from a dangerous spot to a spot where there's some safety and it's raining or it's snowing and you can't clean your windows, your windshield wipers don't work and you can't see the road that you're driving on, that's a bad day right there. And you know, Growing up here in uh, the north with uh, cold weather, I've seen a lot of broken windshield wipers. So you know what? Spend an extra $5 and throw a spare windshield wiper in your vehicle, especially for the driver's side. Sometimes the driver's side has a different size than the uh, passenger side, but at least have a spare windshield wiper for the driver's side on your vehicle. These Baofeng radios are everywhere in uh, the preparedness uh community. In fact, I just went to a meeting this week uh, talking about, you know, uh, these type of radios and repeaters and that kind of stuff. And uh, the one thing that I have found extremely beneficial with these guys is... ...is the weather radio aspect of these... Um, these bale fangs. These bale fangs can be programmed with the weather channel. There's a couple different frequencies that uh, the National Weather Service uses, and I actually tune in to two different ones. One is down by Detroit, and then the other one is up by a Detour in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, and they kind of cover 
the eastern part of Michigan or the part that's around Lake Huron. And uh, I've often used these. And uh, I guess it comes from uh, the marine radios and stuff. When I was a kid being out on uh, the lake, you know, a marine radio would uh, be able to be tuned into your weather as well. So those things are extremely important, uh, being able to get weather no matter where you're at. And another thing, if you have one of those Baofeng radios while you're traveling, as you travel out of one area into the next area, you will pick up on those same frequencies. You will pick up the local weather in, like, if we travel over to Wisconsin... You know, those same frequencies will work in Wisconsin for the local weathers over there. So when the one frequency fades out, when you get into a new area, it picks up the new signal. Another thing when it comes to, uh, you know, personal devices and stuff, you got to have power and you got to have charging cords. And I will rig up battery packs like this with a Ranger band, a little piece of um, a bike inner tube with a couple different um, charging cords on it. Literally one of these rides in every pack that we have, our family, friends, whatever, I make these up for people so they have the ability to charge a phone. And where this comes from, our kids were actually in school one day years ago and there was a lockdown. They locked down the school because there was a dangerous event that had taken place nearby and uh, all the other kids had phones and they were all dead, so they couldn't communicate with their parents. But because, you know, my kids were my kids, they had charging cords and stuff, and because they had charging cords, they were able to loan them out to the other kids in the class so they could call um, their parents and let them know that everything was all right. So don't underestimate something as simple as a charging cord when it comes to preparedness. It can really, really help things out. Another thing... You know, when it comes to firearms uh, and defensive implements and stuff, a lot of them use magazines. And uh, these magazines need to be cleaned from time to time. People will constantly talk about cleaning firearms and stuff, but how many times do you hear people talk about cleaning magazines? Those magazines have to be cleaned. And they all come apart a little bit differently, but yet they're sort of similar in how they do so. Every four or five times that you go out and practice, go to the range, whatever, take one of those magazines apart once and look at how much... Um, unused powder and grime and grit gets into um, those magazines. It's something that has to be cleaned out from uh, time to time. Gardening is another thing. You know, preppers get into gardening and stuff and, uh, you know, whether it's in buckets, whether they got backyard gardens, whether they got big homesteads or whatever, a lot of small um, problems when it comes to growing vegetables are caused by deficiencies in the soil and two of the most common deficiencies that you'll find are magnesium deficiencies and calcium deficiencies. Calcium deficiencies can be remedied by uh, you know using eggshells, heating them up in the oven, powdering them up and spreading that into uh, the soil. Another thing that you can use is a little bit of crumbled up Tums because that is calcium and the other thing with the magnesium is Epsom salts and if you ever looked at Epsom salts they're little flakes just two or three of those little flakes in your ground when you put your seed start in there, you know, with a scoop of your homemade compost in there, that will boost a little bit of magnesium into the soil and it will help remedy those type of uh, soil deficiencies. First aid, you know, I'm big on first aid. I've got illness and I got injury um, kits here. I think first aid is something that's extremely important, especially if there's some type of grid down scenario or whatever. And there's a couple things that I want to share with you guys uh, as far as my first aid kits go. One is uh, airborne. A lot of, just like the soil, a lot of illnesses and stuff are can be made worse because of uh, vitamin deficiencies. And, uh, you know, the airborne, the immunity support, this is uh, basically the, uh, the off-brand stuff. But these are just like an effervescent um, pill. You drop it in some water, it bubbles up, it foams up, it tastes like orange. And you drink that. If you start feeling a cold or something coming on, if you hit it with this right away, sometimes that can uh, knock that down and you're not so sick or not so sick for so long. Another thing, when people are run down and, uh, you know, bad things, stress, whatever, that SHTF event, cold sores. 
when people are run down, they will get cold sores. And I've got several family members that will get cold sores when they get run down, especially this time of year. You're not out. You're not getting a lot of sunlight and whatever. So keep a tube of some type of cold sore medication in one of your first aid kits for the family because I'm here to tell you, there's nothing more painful than having a cold sore, and uh, this stuff can shorten the healing time by several days. And another thing uh, that I want to mention here, sort of the last thing on uh, first aid, UTIs, urinary tract infections, can be a springboard for a lot of other um, infections. I have seen it time and time again where somebody had a UTI and it developed into a more serious infection. And you can actually get um, test strips. These are kind of expensive. They're about $15, $20 for a pack of these. There's usually three or four that come in a pack. But this right here can test if somebody has a UTI. And uh, I have used these on different, you know, occasions, given these to people and whatever, when I, you know, they didn't feel well. And uh, they could test themselves and then they could go find, you know, proper medical treatment, but never let a UTI go. UTIs can be nasty and they can cause a lot of other problems. But anyway, just wanted to take a few minutes here, go over some of these uh, quick prepping tips with you guys, give you guys some... Uh, different solutions to problems that could happen in an SHTF or in just day-to-day -day life. Anyway, this is Modern Refugee. I appreciate all my subscribers out there. I hope you guys get a little information and a little entertainment out of these videos here. Always trying to add tools to your guys' toolbox. You guys have a good one.